Abraham Maslow was an incredibly influential psychologist. He's in the top 10 most cited psychologists of all time. And it's because his work really transformed the way that we looked at psychology, the way that we approach psychology. He looked at what it meant to feel happy, to feel satisfied. He looked at what it meant to live a meaningful life. And he was really interested in how people got there. And this is where his really famous and popular theory of motivation really stemmed from, the hierarchy of needs. It's this idea that our level of happiness or satisfaction in life really depends on whether or not we've fulfilled a set of needs that really pull us away from being able to focus on our purpose, on our sense of satisfaction and meaning in life. Starting with the physiological needs, we all have need for food and for water and for oxygen. A starved person is gonna act very differently than a person that has access to food and water. We all have safety needs. Not just being physically safe from danger, but we need to feel that we're healthy. We need to feel that we're financially secure, that we have reliable shelter, a roof over our head. We all have belonging needs, and this is very strong in the human species. We all feel like we need to be connected to other people, have meaningful, stable relationships, develop love and understanding with the people around us. We all have esteem needs, the need to be recognized for what we, what we are and what we've done. And at the top of his pyramid was the word self-actualization. That once all of these other needs are met, when we feel like we're recognized and appreciated, when we feel like we're loved and that we belong to something, when we feel safe, when we feel like we have all of the food and water and shelter that we need, it's at those times that we're able to spend meaningful time trying to understand who we are and what the meaning in our life actually is. Now, despite the hierarchy of needs being a really popular idea, it's gotten a lot of criticism over the last 50 years in the academic world. And a lot of that was because of the fact that Maslow himself did not do a lot of scientific studies to prove his theories. Maslow also didn't know about how the brain worked, which is something that we know so much more about now than we did when he was developing these theories. And so let's start by looking at how the brain itself has evolved over time. From lizards to birds to early mammals and humans. Throughout all of that evolution, as the brain has become more complex, it wasn't just changing into something new. It was actually building upon the older structures that had already been created. And so we as humans, we still have all of those older parts of our brain. We still have the lizard brain. And these structures down near the bottom of our brain, our brainstem area, are the structures that are very much involved with physiological processes, just like the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy. They're involved with breathing in oxygen, with maintaining homeostasis, our heart beating, driving us for things like hunger and thirst. And built on top of these older brain structures, are structures that are very focused on safety needs, certain structures that orient us to dangers in our environment and motivate us to find things that are safe, to recognize things that are safe. But when mammals came on the scene, mammals were a lot more social and different brain structures started to develop to really keep track of and to manage and process those social type interactions. And this is the part of the brain that we call the limbic system. It's the part of the brain that is really heavily involved in emotional processing. And it's something that allows us to feel like we're accepted, to feel like we belong, to feel like we have strong connections to other people. It requires a different type of processing. It requires us to keep track of things that have happened over long periods of time. And you see that as the brain developed and as it evolved, that we started to be able to keep track of longer and longer periods of time 
We started to be able to really make sense of whether or not people were seeing us, whether or not people were recognizing us. And there are parts of the cortex, parts that are very developed in human beings that really allow us to pay attention to these types of things. And the most important region is the frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe is able to keep track of really long periods of time. It's able to integrate new information with things that have happened before. And the frontal lobe is where all of our goals are created, where our purpose is created. And so the top of the pyramid, the self-actualization portion, largely happens in our frontal lobe. And so what may be happening is, depending on the circumstances in your environment, if you're starved, your consciousness is in that back part of your brain. It's relying only on information that's telling you where food is or where water is and how to get it. If you feel afraid, if you've been through trauma, if you feel like you're not safe, you're stuck in these old brain structures that are looking for how to get out of these dangerous environments. You're processing the here and now in a quick and rapid succession. If you feel like you don't belong, you're stuck in that emotional brain. You're constantly looking for more likes, looking for more shares, looking for more attention, just some kind of indication that you've been accepted, that you feel whole. But if all of that is taken care of, and you're able to kind of step out of the need for recognition, if you feel like you're recognized, that's when you can spend the good quality time in your frontal lobe, thinking about who you are, spending time in this self-understanding type priority, because that's what is gonna truly bring you happiness and satisfaction in life. Now, Maslow didn't have access to all the information that we now have about the brain, about all of these different regions that we've talked about, he didn't know how information flowed through these regions. And so it's nice being able to look at his theory through a different lens and try to understand why it is that we may be acting the way that we are. And it could be just that we're in that part of our brain and we only have access to the information that that part of our brain has. And that our true progress and meaning is all in that, that meaningful frontal lobe time that we set aside for ourselves. So. I really hope that you got some value out of this video. If you did, it really help my channel if you hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, I have some, some book recommendations. I absolutely love Audible as a way to, to listen to all these books. There's a, a free trial link below if you wanna check that out. But uh, I hope to see you guys for the next video. I'll see you then.